So sometime after Feast of Lights, Feast of uh, Dedication, uh, Hanukkah, um, at, at some point after that and before springtime, yes, uh, Jesus um, raised Lazarus. We are now uh, at this point uh, in the last couple of months, few months of Jesus' life, uh, and we are in John 11. Anybody know how many uh, chapters there are in John? Yeah, but you're close. 21. So uh, not quite half of the of the book um, of John is dedicated to the last few months of Jesus' life. Um, so I might be confused after. I uh, just put go to go to facts and do what it says, and, oh. and then forward my signature. Okay. I just said that on YouTube. Uh, I say it a lot. I think this is the first time I've said it on YouTube. Nice. I just don't want. I just want to do. I just don't want to do that. Over Especially a track. My track is like sixty-eight million oh, okay. people that have already tracked. So um, yeah. So ACK just or just or whatever. Make it whatever you want. Write Amy. <coughs> Um, but go to facts and do what it says. By the way, it will be the rest of this lecture, um, and hopefully, and the, hopefully the uh, chapter twenty-four quiz, uh, and then the, the questions on the end. Okay. So, um, so the, the curriculum, uh, of course, once again tells us we know exactly. Um, we know exactly. Oh shoot! Uh, when this happened, uh, but we don't. Uh, we don't know for sure. We know it's after Hanukkah and uh, before Easter, uh, before uh, Christ. I don't know what that's. that's all we know. So uh, let's talk about. Um, we're gonna. We're not gonna start with Lazarus. We're gonna start talk about first uh, what happened, what Jesus was doing, for at least part of that time between uh, between the Feast of Dedication. And the raising of Lazarus. Uh, so this is uh, what it says in verses uh, 40 42 of, of John 10. He, meaning Jesus, went away again across the Jordan to, to the place where John had been baptizing at first. And there he remained. And many came to him, and they said, John did no sign, but everything that John said about this man was true. And many people, uh, many believed in him there. Uh, so we don't know how how long he stayed there. We do know, or we don't know exactly where he was, but he was somewhere in Korea, um, where and we early in the year we talked about John, uh, you know, baptizing him. So wherever that was, it could have been in Bethania to the north. Nobody knows for sure exactly where it was, but we, but it was in the Jordan River. Uh, so he was he was baptizing in the Jordan. Uh, river. So, uh, so by anybody's estimation, it's the east eastern side of the Jordan River. The other side, the Trans Jordan, um, is where he is. And it says that many were um, interested in Christ, and, and that he uh, he um, baptized uh, quite a few people, uh, and they believed in him. So. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of things about this. Um, so, uh, this is these these people that are coming to Jesus know who he is in some sense, and it's entirely possible that they know who he is because of John's testimony about Jesus, that he is the Lamb of God. I must become he he must become greater. I must become uh, less. Uh, and so uh, John, um, John kind of set the table for for this for uh, Jesus ministry um, as a whole. Uh, and so uh, John a uh, accurately told them that that he is greater and that he is the Messiah. So what are then the lessons for us in this? Here's the thing: John never lived to see. John never lived to see much of uh, Jesus. John didn't live to see the resurrection. 
because he was um, he was murdered. Uh, now, before he died, uh, he had some of his disciples go to Jesus and ask Jesus this question. Are you the one? Are you the Messiah? after that resurrection, but after telling me that, that can happen to really strong Christians. All of us at some point in our life. And Jesus' answer was brilliant. He said, go back and tell them what you've seen. The eyes of the blind be dead be Basically, he's saying, yeah, I'm Messiah. I'm doing all the things that the prophets said Messiah would do. Um, and I and I believe that they went back and they told John that when he came out. He said, well, Jesus was exactly who he thought he um, was. Um, so uh, here's the thing. It is our job uh, to tell others uh, about Jesus. We are, and this is very timely. John the Baptist. John, John the Baptist. John the Baptist. I'm sorry, I've been talking about John the Baptist. I've been talking about John the Baptist the whole time. I'm sorry, I should have. Not for those of you at home, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I just thought you, since we read the thing that you were John the Baptist, whatever, whatever. I can see how, how that was easily. Sorry about that. John, John the Baptist. John, John lived to be a very old man. Yeah, because he would have had trouble writing this. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, he died in exile. We don't know why. why. John is very sick. Two. You are the first one. This is what you said? Oh, and it's been up there a couple of days. Uh, she said John is a prosaic name. So there you go. That's your new word of how long it is. You may have it until you graduate. Did you just diss one of like, the apostles and then this other guy who's actually really important? Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's just saying it's a fact. common name. It is a very common name. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, okay, where was I? Uh, about John, I was going to say something. Oh, okay, so with the cold thing, okay, so... We are, we're supposed to sow and cultivate that. Like that, we're talking about planting the seed of the gospel uh, in people's hearts and telling people about Jesus. But here's the thing: we, I think, sometimes we feel responsible for the people we witness to, for their growth. Um, I, I had a, a friend who had a lot of problems. He's a very young believer. I'm like 17 years old. Uh, and I felt like I was uh, responsible for her growth. I wasn't. And, and you're not. You're responsible to tell others about you. But their walk is not only their responsibility, but God is the one that causes it. And sometimes I think, especially Bible teachers and, and pastors, try to force that. Um, but you, you literally can't. You all have to be. Who is it that calls it? Calls it a choosing. That we each have a choosing. And we can choose what we're going to do. We can choose whether we're going to follow Christ or not. We can choose whether we're going to obey or not. Uh, and so uh, it is not anyone else's, you, especially at your age, your spiritual journey more spiritual maturity um, is not on anyone else. Now, God, God causes the increase uh, of that faith. And he'll show you who he is if you allow him. If y'all are 15, 16 years old, you walk with Jesus. You don't want to walk with Jesus. Now, your mom and dad used to walk with Jesus. And you're walking with Jesus. God doesn't have grandchildren. He only has children. 
My parents were very young. Your walk with Jesus. God was the same. My walk with Jesus. Uh, so um, we we need to we need to grow in that. Um, and and listen, when we do that, when we tell people about Jesus, um, I mean, I've, I've spent the last eight years of my life talking about Jesus as human. Some people have come to Christ. Some people haven't. Some people have grown in Christ. Some people haven't. Um, and 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 I'm I'm 62 years old. I don't know how many years I have left. Right? There may be somebody that sat in my classroom that's far from God right now, and I may and, and may come to God. I may never live to see that. But that's not why I do it. I do it because it's partly because God's holy to me. But mostly. Because this is what this is what God has called me to do, and it is the most other than being a mother than a wife is the most meaningful thing I've ever done in my life. And I think the most important thing I've ever done. Uh, but I may not I may not live to see the result. Maybe maybe because I'm with Jesus, but maybe because that person moves away and was far from God and moved away and. I won't know. That's not why we do it, though. We do it to be obedient uh, to God. So, that's that part. I just spent longer on that than I thought. Uh, yeah, they're saying that that's where it was. Maybe, maybe somewhere else around there. But that's probably pretty close. Um, this is an approximation. Not an approximation. This is a recreation, a uh, reconstruction of a first century tomb. Um, and um, so I'm going to talk a little bit before we talk about Lazarus. I'm going to talk a little bit about those tombs because it came up yesterday, right? So the tombs were not underground. They did, they, they well, I won't get into that. Um, people were buried in a tomb that was above ground. And it would have a low doorway. And there would be a, a big stone. There would be a trench in front of it, a big stone that would be rolled um into into that trench down downward uh, to cover the the door inside the tomb there was a front room and there was a back room and the front room had several benches built into it and and like like concrete or, or stone benches um, and when someone died they would embalm them their way of embalming was to get good smelling spices and um, and uh, perfumes, and they would wrap the body in linen cloth, and as they did that, they would pack in the spices, mostly just to keep the smell. Uh, I'm not sure it was a preservant of any kind, but uh, mostly just to keep the smell down as, as the body decayed. Uh, and they'd wrap them all up, and they'd put a face cloth um, around the head, and that should sound, all sound familiar to you, because that's the way Jesus was buried as well. And they'd lay that body on the bench. And they had several of them because what if somebody else, you know, died close to it or two people died at the same time? So they had several of them. And they would leave the body there for about a year uh, for as long as it took for the all the sh uh, soft tissue to decay and uh, go away. And then they would go in and they would take the bones of that person, and they would put them in a box called an ossuary, uh, a, a kind of a concrete or a stone box. Um, and um, so, uh, and then they'd put a, a tag on the end of it that said, here it is. Uh, by the way, I think we've talked about, they found, did we talk about this one? Did we talk about they found Caiaphas's ossuary? Oh, maybe that's 12th grade I told you. Uh, yeah, they found Caiaphas's ossuary, proving that there was a Caiaphas, and it says the high priest and it gives the dates, and it it proves that there was a Caiaphas that was high priest at the time Jesus was, was uh, murdered. So anyway, then in the back room there were all these niches in the wall, and they would take that ossuary and they would put it, in, and 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 sometimes they put multiple members of the family. That's true of Caiaphas's too their bones in, in that same box. 
and then they would put it in one of the niches in the back because it was a it was a family tomb, right? I don't know if you've ever seen a family plot where the the family's all it, well, it was that, but it looked like this. Um, so um, so uh, yeah, that's that's how uh, people um, were buried back in that time. Uh, and then this is a real house in Bethany. It is the oldest known house in Bethany. This is not Lazarus and Mary and Martha's house, but it's not far from where some scholars believe it is, about 30 feet from where they, they think their, their house was. Um, and this one's quite well preserved, though. And so Jesus, that house would have been there. And Jesus went to raise Lazarus. Uh, that just always makes me like, please, dear Jesus, let me know. Um, so, uh, so Jesus is in Berea, and the, the curriculum says if you assume that Jesus stayed in Perea for several weeks, we can't assume that. We don't know how long he stayed there. Uh, but we do know that he waited two days before he traveled uh, to Bethany. Uh, So, um, so uh, he uh, so then after those two days, he goes um, to Bethany. So this is where uh, where we start the. Uh, now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Now remember, he's their brother; they are sisters. Uh, they're they're all siblings. Uh, it was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he... Uh, um, so when he had heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. And, and so why, why would he do that? Why would he wait? The first thing I thought of um, with this was when, um, when we realized my father, uh, my father had been on a hospice, but he had been somewhat mobile um, and had been awake and wasn't bedridden. But there came a day when my mother tried to feed him and he couldn't swallow. He had Alzheimer's. He forgot what to swallow. And so the nurses came and, and um, we realized that um, there was a day. I was the only daughter who lived nearby, two houses down. One was in Texas, one was in Kansas City, one was in Indiana. We called each of them and they left almost immediately and rushed to be by your father's side. That's what you would expect if you love someone, right? But Jesus doesn't do that, and that's that's off. So um, so God's ways are not always our ways. <clears throat> Sometimes God does something that we do not understand. And that's when we just have to trust that He knows what He's doing. And that's going to be true for, for Mary and Martha. Did Jesus love Lazarus? Yeah. He whom you love is dead, right? Did he know that Lazarus would die? Absolutely, he knew Lazarus would die. Did Jesus immediately go to save Lazarus? No. Would you have done the same thing? Probably not. I would have done what my sisters did. So, so why did Jesus wait? I believe he waited because he wanted to show not only Mary and Martha and Lazarus, but also the huge crowd that he has. 
this is true. Everything in the Gospel of John is pointing to the Lord Jesus. And it's no great thing to know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that I believe in him. Uh, and so uh, he is showing this family and everyone around him that he is the Christ, he is the Son. We can't always understand why God does what he does. And sometimes he does things that we think are cruel, or that we think are unfair, or that we think are wrong. But we have to trust that he knows what he's doing. Um, and we can rest with the assurance um, that he does what is perfect best for his people and what is uh, and what will bring um, glory and um, and honor to him. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways of knowledge and he will make those your heavy on the paths. Sometimes things happen to us or, or we are in a situation where we think this is this isn't uh, good for me, or this isn't the right thing, or we would do something different if we were God, but we wouldn't. But let me put it this way: God always does what we would ask Him to do if we knew everything about Him. I say that again: God always does what we would ask Him to do. If we knew everything about us, we are living with a very um, small understanding of the universe around us. We don't have all of the answers, but He does. He sees the end from the beginning, um, and we have to trust that. We have to trust him. We have to trust who he is. Um, so even when we can't understand God, we can trust him. And we can trust that what he is doing is right. I can't tell you how many times I have prayed, I don't understand. Why children are hurt, or why so many ways, and 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 and, and you will wear yourself out trying to figure out the answer. Just trust. Trust your heart. There's no other reason why you would not trust God. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And and rest in the assurance that He has your best interests in mind. Sometimes. Um, Max Cleland was a, a hero in the Vietnam War. He, um, something that stayed in right here and took away um, his um, ears and his hearing and his um, arms, one arm, parts of one, and one arm and a whole arm and his legs. He was confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life. And he would go around telling his story. And he said, it's hard to be hard. And I came to Christ because of this. And now God has given me a new theology of my own. But you never would have done it. We don't always understand, but we can rest um, in the assurance that God knows what He's doing. He's God. Four minutes. Oh, ten minutes. Oh, oh wait, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I thought it was six. We get out of nine ten. Twenty-eight. Nine twenty-eight. Okay, we got two minutes. My bad. I forgot it was travel oh. schedule. No, yeah, it's okay. Um. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna hang these out. They're due Monday. Oh. Okay. Perfect.
will have some type of class. We worked on it last time. We have to get there. Oh, you do one day. You never do that? Yes. Oh, there you go. Oh, uh, I'd like to see you. 47 days later. Thank you. Hey, Ellie. I didn't get one. Yes, sir. Just get a lock because it's so bad. No. That's okay. The the What is this a snake's favorite subject? A what now? What is a snake's favorite subject? Science. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> you got that wrong. Science. Um, your video is going to be Your video is going to be